Hi, this is Billy Joe with Moon Goddess 114433, and this is another uh, Divine Masculine Energy update. I'm just going to be a real quick one. So, uh, the decks I used to today was um, <clears throat> the Akashic Tarot, the Deviant Moon Tarot, and the Legacy of the Divine Tarot. Okay. So, first I asked spirit what is going on in their 3d world in their physical world what are they dealing with this week and i have the five of roses the garden this represents someone who has children some or someone who wants children but children are a factor in their life they are this person, this set of Divine Masculines, um, they're a good father figure or mother figure. Whether, you know, the, the Divine Masculine is an energy. So, it doesn't matter if you're a male or female. You can carry the Divine Masculine energy. Um, so, this person is a good parent figure. They, or they have children in their life that they take care of. And this is a very strong concern in their life. And they get preoccupied a lot by the, the children that they have in their life. And you have the Six of Keys in Crescent Moon. So this is someone, it's representing someone um, that is putting a lot of hard work in and this is a good sign this is this is showing their this basically says that their hard work is paying off so in their 3d world they've been putting a lot of work in they've been dealing with their children they've been putting a lot of work in and also it can also signify that finances are starting to have a breakthrough so that's a that's a good uh, symbol for many of the Divine Masculines. Then you have the Seven of Forces, Balance. Now with this card, of course, it's kind of like you have to have, you know, you have the scales in there. You have to have equal give and take. What you put out in the universe comes back to you and because there has to be a balance. But with this card, lots of times... In the physical world, it can represent contracts. It can represent legal hearings, um, whether that is court cases or divorces. They're going through some things that's taken up their time. Um, when they're not, um, I mean, you basically what I'm getting is this person has been very busy. They're busy with children, they're busy with work, and they're busy with these contracts or legal court uh, situations that's going on. Some of them are actually going through with divorces. And then you have number two, the Akashic Library. And this is talking about being prepared, getting prepared for a new life. So, for some of them that's actually going through with divorces, and I'm, I'm hearing that a lot. Um, there are a lot that's going through divorces because they're preparing for a new life. And some of them it's not divorces. Some of it's leaving karmic situations so they can get prepared for this new life. But those that have children have, have kept their children in their mind. That's their forefront. This was the first card. That's the most important this is the most priceless to them. This, this is most important. And um, those that resonate with this reading will, will understand that, that their children are the utmost importance to them. Okay. So next I asked what's going on in their mind frame, their mindset, their headspace, the energy and their thoughts. 
and the bottom of the deck was the emperor. So the divine masculines in this group are wanting to take the lead. They're ready to, they're, they're having the confidence. They've actually gained the confidence so that they can take this lead and become the leader in this relationship that you are, their feminine is expecting them to become. We have the Three of Swords. So in this deck, she, you see her touching, um, now of course she's got tears coming down, but she also touches the tip of one of the blades because in this deck it represents um, anxiety over separation, physical separation from someone they love. It represents longing for someone that they're not physically close to. And with her head on her forehead, it represents, and then you have the shadow behind her. So this represents um, whether it could be a physical or it could be in their mind. This um, feeling of loneliness, this feeling of um, longing. You know, their heart is not really, it's, it's kind of, it's really sad. Not, you know, it can represent heartbreak, but it also represents severe sadness and loneliness. And longing to be with that, they long to be with their divine feminine. And then you have the Knight of Swords. Now, the Knight of Swords is someone who's brave, he's protective, but sometimes he's rash. But with this reading, I'm really strongly feeling they feel like they've waited long enough. They've went through enough delays, and they are ready to rush in to be with their Divine Feminine. They, they're tired of feeling this, this loneliness and this longing. They're ready to to jump forward they don't want to wait anymore then you have the seven of wands so with the seven of wands in this deck um it shows this child who's like being in a thicket for days but what it represents is they have finally found their way out and this your divine masculine, all these delays that they've went through with, you know, being in union with their divine feminine, they're finally seeing a way out. The queen of swords in this deck, she has tears coming down. She's got like this black thing they wear when they're grieving, you know, she got blood coming off her sword, and it's from her own heart because of loneliness, grief from extreme loneliness. Well, they're coming out of the thicket. They're coming out of this loneliness. They're fighting it. They're coming out of it because you have the Page of Wands. And the Page of Wands is someone who has, you know, he's on these stilts making it across this icy lake. Because he, he had to find a way to his counterpart. He has to find a way. And so he come up with a creative way to get to his divine feminine. He found his way out of it. With his own creative imagination. He's worked through it. So next I asked what's going on in the Divine Masculine's heart space. Put these up. So in the Divine Masculine's heart space, on the bottom of the deck, we have the Sun card. The sun card is basically, it's how he feels in his heart for his divine feminine. She lights up his world. She brightens his days. This is like one of the most positive cards in the deck. 
in his heart, he knows that she is his ten of cups. That's his home. That's where he feels safe. And he feels confident. And he feels secure. In extreme love. I mean, this is the ten of cups. This is like friendship and love and loyalty. All of it. You have the judgment card. I'm hearing for some of them it's like a resurrection, like a like where he thought his heart was cold and now it beats again. And for some of you, I'm hearing he's had a change of heart, he's had a change of mind, something that he thought he didn't want before. Now he's realizing and awakening to the fact that he actually does want it. So some of you that will hit. That will hit. Then you have the nine of swords. He is surrendering. In his heart he's surrendering to what he is awakened up to. This new knowledge. This new acceptance. This is strength. You know, surrendering isn't weak. It's strong. He's very strong. Because this is... This is loyalty. This is willing to start putting forth the longevity. This is ready to commit. Then you have the strength card. So in his heart, um, he feels like this has long potential, long term, the forever kind of strength. In his heart, he knows that there's a connection between you through your higher self. And he's ready and prepared to go long term. For this to be steady, committed. And then you have the four of wands. In his heart, you're already his bride. This is like the twin flame card. So, okay, um, thank you so much for watching. If you if it resonated with you, if you liked it, please like, share, comment, subscribe. And I hope you watch the next time. I will be uploading the Divine Feminine next. Bye. <laughs> Drop my camera. <laughs>